and Tina. I, not easily. Okay. So, um, anyway, we hope you enjoyed uh, that little look at, uh, uh, you know, the uh, actual, actually, we all know Playing Crazy as being the first Mickey Mouse cartoon that was uh, released, but uh, it was actually the third produced. Uh, the Alpen Gaucho was the second, Playing Crazy was the first. So, um, that cartoon actually predates, uh, you know, uh, Steamboat Willie. Um, did I say Playing Crazy? Yeah. I meant to say Steamboat Willie was the first released. Um, but uh, Playing Crazy was the first made. This was the second. Um, so anyway, uh, we're here for the Sign of Zorro, which, as you all know, because this is 50 and Fabulous Film Festival, uh, was released in 1960. And uh, what we did is uh, for that film was we took the first uh, eight episodes of Zorro, which made its debut on ABC in 1957, and we put them together for a feature uh, film that was actually uh, released in color. And, uh, you know, Zorro was shot in color, even though it aired on television in black and white. So this was really the first opportunity that audiences had to see, you know, Zorro in, in beautiful, vibrant color. Uh, so, um, no, it's not. What else? <laughs> Becky? Uh, my dad, I thought it was released originally that way. No? What do we color as I thought Dave said that we, we uh, Dave said we shot it in color. We can blame Dave Smith for that. He wrote my notes. No, I'm kidding. And he's gone, so we're going to, you know... <laughs> no, I'm but he's not gone, really, because he, we're still using him as a consultant, so we're going to have to look at that, uh, that contract. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but, uh, but anyway, so we'll, we'll get the right facts out here when Becky Klein comes out, uh, I'm sure. That'll be fabulous to hear the truth. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, uh, we have some special surprises for you uh, that, uh, you know, we have some special guests that uh, we're going to uh, introduce you shortly that uh, I think you're going to really enjoy getting a chance to hear from. And uh, then also just to remind you, this is the last 15 Fabulous that we have for uh, 2010. And uh, I'm just wondering how many people in the audience saw, have seen uh, all four of the screenings. Oh, wow. More than I expected. That's great. So soon we'll be ready to announce the 2011 15 Fabulous slate, which is, uh, I think, you know, a very exciting uh, uh, group of films. And if, like I said before, if you know your Disney film history, uh, you know that uh, 1961 was a pretty big uh, year in terms of the feature films that came out from the studio. So we'll have a lot of fun uh, in 2011 here at the, at the studio. Um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Becky Klein, who uh, is now making her first official appearance as the new director of the Walt Disney Archives. So, uh, thank, you so thank you so much. Well, this is actually my first time seeing Sign of Zorro on the big screen, too. So there was a little snafu there, but we'll figure that one out. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Uh, we are very excited about Zorro. It, like Stephen said, it came out in 1960. And uh, we have a couple special guests here tonight that we, or this afternoon, that we brought to, to visit with you and to tell you a little more. This isn't the first time they've seen the sign of Zorro on the big screen. So uh, they're here. Why don't you come on down? I'd like to introduce to you a couple very special people in the Disney family. Uh, indeed family. We have Mr. Guy Williams Jr. and Ms. Janice Cooper Williams. Who's Guy Williams family. They're here with us today. Sit down with us and we'll chat a little bit here. Why don't you come sit right here next to me. Um, Guy, if you want to sit there. And, okay. and I'll let you guys share that one. So as I just mentioned, they're family here. Uh, I'm so happy to have you here. We've, we've worked together on the uh, DVD set of the Zorro films that came out. Guy came and actually was filmed in the archives, which was a wonderful treat for us with uh, Leonard Malton. And we got to look at a lot of character merchandise and props and costumes. Me, <laughs> it was always, it was wonderful having you there too. And and uh, I think most of you know in uh, the issue of our 23 magazine, I think it was the summer issue last year, there was an article about Zorro that was written by Paul Anderson for that issue. And he talked to both Guy and Janice and got some of their insights. And so we thought it'd be really fun as we were showing the movie today to introduce you to them. So uh, just a, a quick little thing, just wanted to ask you to share with us a few of your memories about the filming here at the studio. I know, Guy, that you got to hang around here a lot as a kid, and uh, knowing firsthand what it was like to be here on the lot and, and share some of your memories as a child, and then, of course, some memories of your father. Sure, it, it was uh, welcome. I appreciate the opportunity to, to be here to share with my mom. 
Uh, I also wanted to acknowledge my sister, Tony, and my nephew, Nando. Would you stand up just for a second, please? <laughs> Tony came to us during the second season. Right. <laughs> so she probably doesn't remember a whole lot about it <laughs> firsthand. <laughs> It, it was fun, and we were talking uh, several times, not just today, about uh, how Disney was, this studio was, was so familial. The, uh, the cast were all friends. We all spent holidays at each other's homes. Um, you'd come to the set here, and it was, you'd, you'd be dealing with people who seemed like family. I mean, everyone, through the, the, the um, editor to the director, Norm Foster, who was a family friend. Um, so it was, it, was a, it was a really familial culture here which which we enjoyed and I, as a kid it was great uh, hanging out on the sets and watching all the action on Fridays. Uh, my mom has probably memories before I was aware there was going to be a Zorro because they were looking at the set being built. Uh, That's right. That's right. We would come, uh, Guy had done his test and we were waiting to hear, up real close it's very uh, and we were waiting to hear having no idea whether he was going to be Zorro or not, but he had a great feeling about it. And we would drive over to um, Griffith Park and park high in the hills and look down on the building, the Zorro said. <laughs> so that was pre-shooting. <coughs> oh, wonderful. So it was a pretty elaborate set. For those of you who don't know a lot about Zorro, uh, it was executive produced by Walt Disney himself. He bought the rights and produced the series for ABCs in, in 57. And he wanted top quality in everything. He spent a great deal of money on all of the, the production uh, values of, of Zorro. It was not only the best costumes, but he had the best art directors. Many Disney legends worked on this, this program. Bill Anderson produced it. Walt Executive produced the series. But also they had people like, oh my goodness, uh, Marvin Davis art directed it. And they had Emil Curry and Hal Gaussman who worked on the, uh, this, the interior design and decoration. Of course, William Lava, who did the sound, the music, and uh, Chuck Keen and Cotton Warburton and all those amazing people that you see in film credits on Disney all the time. Well, they worked on the series as well, so it was really, really high quality. The costumes were gorgeous, made out of beautiful materials. Um, some of them had silver and gold bullion embroidery on the, the beautiful wall. And maybe I'm thinking about all this color because the costumes are so rich and detailed and you know, that didn't need to be that way for television, especially at the time, but Walt wanted everything to be absolutely beautiful. And the, the sets, I understand, were just gorgeous. I've only seen photos of them, but it was pretty realistic, wasn't Very it? Very realistic, and one of the things that I found interesting as a kid, having spent so much time on the set and seeing all those colors, when we watched it on black and white television, <laughs> I was filling in the colors. I. I had always believed it was in color. Yeah. But um, when they did colorize it, they did a fantastic job. The, the colors are very truly represented, so we were really pleased with that. That's wonderful. And you mentioned Cotton mm -hmm. Warburton, who was the ace, the, the editor um, for uh, Zorro. Um, my first student film, when I was in high school, we cut here in the, in the uh, editing facility. Oh. And Cotton <laughs> took over and, and kind of shepherded me through, taught me how to hot splice, and, and uh, so that oh. it's part of the family experience that went on for years. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. So can, can you remember any fun particular stories about, I know there was a mania about Zorro, very, not quite as big as, as the Davy Crockett craze, but, but pretty big in those years. And I know there's some kind of family stories about, didn't your dad have a car that was vandalized at one point? <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> Mom, really, I did. <laughs> yeah, there was one, a, a story of such. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think something about a yellow convertible Cadillac. <laughs> the yellow is a red leather interior. <laughs> Love that car. <laughs> Someone but, scratched uh, his ear. At that time, when, when this show star started uh, airing, uh, Steve was in first grade. And uh, he got really special attention from everyone in the classroom. And he oh, used that. <laughs> the, the family calls me Steve, my middle name, because we needed to know at home who my mom was after. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was fun. Uh, they always ask me, who's your dad coming to pick you up today? 
Very good. So now, tell us a little about your dad. I know that, that, of course, everybody's familiar with him as an actor, but I know he's very accomplished in other fields as well. What other kind of things did he enjoy doing? Fencing, writing. Um, he was that person that you, you see, uh, the, the Don Diego and the Zorro. That was who we lived with. I mean, that, that, so much of his personality sh uh, shone through the, the characters. And I think Walt had him do that or asked him to do that. So you get very much what he was like. I know he played the guitar, correct, as well? Yeah. Or did... <laughs> <Hello? laughs> A little? He worked at it. Uh, his publicity materials said he did. <laughs> yes, uh, he did. He, was, uh, he studied because uh, it was important at that time. Um, but the th a guy loved music. That really was a very important part of his life. And uh, the thing he would always say he would really rather have been than anything was a conductor. And he would at home put these great <laughs> recordings <laughs> on and, and conduct to them. He had a great time. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. I know, that's unfortunate that you don't have him conducting something on film. And they had him study with Vincente Gomez. Okay. Uh, Disney did so that he looked like he knew he looked Disney. like he was playing. Okay, and he used to say that he'd go and just he'd just ask Vincente to play Bach or something on, uh -huh. on the guitar. So oh. he didn't do too much study. <laughs> okay, well he he was also a chess player. I understand too. He's pretty yeah, good at that. Very master chess player. Master chess player. So master fence, uh, master fence, sir. Yeah, and and chess player. So that's pretty advanced in yeah, my book. Quite well, okay. yeah. <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you so much for coming. We'll uh, we'll run the film now in just a moment, but we're so happy to have you here as our special guest. And thank you, Becky. We appreciate your and coming. And congratulations. Thank you so much.